as you can see the uh, place is really coming together now it's a heck of a lot more peaceful here than where we were at before you guys you know so i owe a lot of the a lot of the uh you know credit my company's great man this flatbed company is spot on this race has been just a blessing you know we're able to really pay for our living and still stack you know got our own garage there you know we're able to just we're basically going to turn it into a you know little entertainment lounge area you know probably get a pool table or ping pong table you know a couple of of uh, beer signs or something you know? so so yeah man my brakes locked up right that's what you guys came here for First of all, I'm not going to stress enough how important it is that you secure those loads because you never know what's going to happen. In the road, there was a, there was a strap that got caught onto my drive shaft. And uh, upon it spinning, right, it knocked the hoses off of both the brake chambers on the, uh, on the front drive axle. So... The automatic spring brakes engaged and I skidded for about a good quarter mile. I was able to get a look at the uh, skid mark pattern. Uh, the tow driver, you know, hooked up my tractor and trailer, towed me just around the corner there. It was at the top of the hill, Castaic southbound toward LA, 5 freeway, right before the Gorman exit. We dropped it there then he you know hooked up to the rear of my tractor and we got back on the freeway past the scene of the incident and he said wow you know this is a this is a pretty good pattern here he's like it's not all crazy it's not you know all over the freeway he's like you know a lot of times drivers will panic in that situation slam on the brakes and make it worse you really jackknife the load now my load was close to 30,000 pounds, it wasn't that heavy, but I was hauling um, basically, you know, aluminum building material, so it's very pliable, and it's very pliable, and it's, uh, did I say aluminum steel building material, but it's not very thick steel, therefore it's, you know, still very pliable, and I had to do a lot of load checks, man, I had to make sure that I had edge protectors on there because it will cut through the straps. So if ever you have to, if ever you question anything in your mind, do whatever you can to mitigate that hazard that you think can occur. Okay, better safe than sorry. Better to do more work than try to save a couple of minutes or save a couple of breaths of breaths of oxygen. Okay, just do it because. You know, this load took me about, man, I don't know, I must have done like eight or nine, maybe more load checks, but the load check that I had just done that morning, you know, one strap became pretty loose. So who knows what would have happened once those spring brakes engaged, right? Who knows what would have happened? You know, that comes through the cabin and I'm done, you know. I can only hope and pray for one, Fourth of July. One can only hope and pray that as it comes through, that it misses me. Now, what was I thinking in the moment? <sighs> Definitely an adrenaline rush. More of like a, what the hell is going on? And then my foot reacted, right, to the brakes. But I didn't hit it. I, I literally, is the brake, is my foot, right? Is my foot. Because I remembered it. You know, and I go over that over and over in my mind. I've always gone over that in my mind. What would I do if those brakes engaged out of nowhere? What would I do if the traffic came to a stop out of nowhere? You've always got to be thinking those things because it's true that you can never be ready for something unexpected because it's unexpected. And that's why my dad as a truck driver has always said, expect the unexpected. Right, but your idea of the unexpected it becomes something completely different when it finally happens and you know
know that. Skidding for a quarter mile like that, it screwed those tires up. And upon it getting towed, right, the tires popped as we exited Gorman to the trailer storage yard. And then after he proceeded to hook up the tractor and drop me off here right by my house down the street to Kenworth in Mont here in Montebello, Montebello, California. So that's basically what it was, man, is a, a mix of not knowing what the hell is going on and just understanding that this thing is coming to a stop really fast. And then I thought about the load and I'm like, okay, I'm still alive, right? And then I look in my rear view and I see a bunch of smoke. It's like 1 a.m., like 1 a.m. And then it was just about getting it off the road. You know, I, I couldn't really see much as far as traffic behind me. Who knows what the hell happened, right? In, in the moment, I'm saying, obviously, I know what happened after. No accidents, nothing. Okay, thank God. I was able to get it over the shoulder, pulled off, and then, you know, proceeded to try to assess the situation myself. <clears throat> and, uh, you, you, cause I just heard that whoosh of air, you know, and, uh, got it over the side, came to a complete stop. And, uh, I think I was going about 64, 64 miles an hour or so. And I was getting ready to go down a pretty, pretty steep grade. So, you know, had that happen on the grade going, going down, you know, who knows, man, who knows how it would have affected the load. Who knows? No, I don't know. There's, there's no way of knowing, but what I do know is my load did not move a muscle, not a muscle. I'm going to be, I wish I could include some pictures in here, but you know, what you see in the thumbnail is what you get for now. Uh, pictures I always post on my Instagram and of course on my TikTok so you can find me you know on both those places Instagram and TikTok Mr. By the Mile you know, YouTube and uh, I haven't put photos of it up yet but I'm you know I will there's also a little a little video of the of my rig getting towed so now they're gonna put me in a new truck so I've been corresponding with my DM corresponding with Kenworth and uh you know, it's, I guess it's taking a while to get fixed. So and I'm gonna go ahead and get a rental. They're gonna, you know, my company, if you wanna find out where I'm at, information is in the description box below. Email me redpillowware at yahoo.com. They were really great about getting me home after this. You know, I, I've been home now for a week because of this and save your money, man, because you're gonna need it, you know? There's no reason why you can't work this job and uh, be able to stack and save cash. There's, there's no excuse. You, you should be able to definitely save a good amount. Um, so, you know, they're gonna cover my fuel. They're gonna cover everything, you know, the rental to get me over to Tulsa and get me a new rig. Maybe it'll be the, the Peterbilt, right? We'll see, we'll see what they give me. We'll see what happens with the truck. You know, today's 4th of July, Sunday. Happy 4th of July, you guys. Thank God I'm still here. That was definitely a, uh, quite a situation. You know, it was definitely a surprise. And uh, you gotta be going over this stuff in your head constantly. Preparedness is all about, you know, having the knowledge, having the practice, but you also have to be able to think of A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, right? Anything and everything that could happen and go wrong. And uh, just kind of meditate on that ask questions uh, to other drivers that are more experienced than you that that's what that cb radio is for too man, you know ask questions if you don't know and definitely call your safety and ask them you know well, what do you do in this situation what do you do in that situation so you know my advice to you goes those brakes lock up on you it's it, it's going to pull in the direction of of the affected the affected area right so for example upon skidding and the tire busting 
on the drives. Obviously it wasn't the steers, but if it, if it is the steers, it's gonna pull in that direction pretty hard. And uh, you've just got to go with it. So, you know, don't fight it, don't slam on the brakes. Just try to keep it under control. You know, that the, ta the, the trailer did swing uh, to the left a little bit, which I could hardly even see, but I, I felt it because I felt the rig go like this. So upon it doing that, you know, I knew it must be going that way. So I turned a little bit, you know, what could I really do? Then it, it straightened out and then over to the side. That was that, you know, it wasn't too, it wasn't too crazy. Although it felt insane, it wasn't too crazy. So had I made this video immediately after the incident, I don't think I would really be able to describe it well enough for you. You know what I'm saying? And as I learn, you guys are gonna learn from what I'm going through, you know? And thank you for being here. You guys have been here, you know, most of you have been here since I started almost two years ago. So it's been a crazy ride, man. It's been a trip. And, uh, you know, I can only hope and pray that never happens again. But hey, you can't control what happens in life. But you know, the more you educate yourself, the more questions you ask in this business, there's no such thing as a stupid question. You're new now, you're new. And I don't care if you've got two years, 25, 30 years, you know, you, you've never got it figured out. You've never got it figured out. Always be asking questions. There's someone out there that has gone through more than you lived through more than you and um you know you've got to pick those brains okay and be able to sniff out the bullshit too because there's a lot of liars out there you know that try to act like they're bad but they're not i'm telling you a situation like this it's gonna scare you it's a trip it is it is a uh definitely gives you a moment of reflection and then you have a moment of appreciation for the life that you have and that you're living. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, you guys, if you have any questions, any more questions, those of you who are more experienced that have had a situation, comment down below. And if you're interested in starting with my company, if you're a brand new driver, you know, they'll start you at 47 cents a mile, flatbed, and your pay goes up one penny every three months after your first month, okay? So by the time you get to the end of your first year, you'll be at 51 cents a mile, but you'll take a quick, an immediate jump to 56 cents a mile, right? So that's easily another five cents. That's a five cent raise after your first year. If you're an experienced driver, you will start at 56 cents a mile. Once you accrue 120,000 miles with the company I drive for, they'll pay you 58 cents a mile. I'm closing in. I've been here eight months at this flatbed company. And I'll be closing in at 120,000 miles either next month or the, or the next month after. So right around my one year mark. And instead of, you know, only 57 cents a mile or what the pay was at, only getting 52 cents a mile, I'll be at 58 cents a mile. Thank you very much, everybody, you know, in the office, all you guys up there looking out for us. Thank you. You know, $100 for tarping those loads not too bad man hey some tarp jobs it'll take four hours some will take 30 minutes some will take 20 minutes you know question is are you willing to work because this line of work flat bedding it's starting to pay all right mr by the mile you're home for discussions based on my knowledge and experience in trucking the red pill survival congrats to all my new recruits you guys made it man and um you know, just continue to just continue to learn, man, and take it slow. Continue to learn, take it slow, and uh, aim high in steering. Get the big picture. Make sure they see you. Leave yourself an out. Uh, aim high in steering. Get the big picture. Keep your eyes moving. Leave yourself an out. Make sure they see you. All right. All, at all times, bro. And expect the unexpected, right? You get in that tractor and that tractor trailer and every day you just meditate for a second tell yourself no accidents today all right that involves doing a good pre-trip 
making sure you've got no leaks in your airlines, right? Making sure that all your signals and lights are working, your horns and all that stuff, man. And then as a flatbed are making sure that everything is secure because when it comes to those airlines and something goes wrong, you wanna make sure that that load is secured. You know, do you feel safe with, with your buddy's family or your family riding next to your rig? Right. Are you comfortable with what you've done? All right. Y'all take care and stay safe. All you truckers out there, new and veteran, happy 4th of July. See you on the road.